I came here under the impression that English is very prevalent and many people speak English or many things are done in English. Uh, however, so uh, yeah, let's start our uh, little talk, our little interview today with uh, uh, with uh, with a nice uh, guest from uh, Mauritius. So welcome, guys, first of all to uh, to the video. Uh, this is gonna be a new series of video in my channel. Since I live in Japan, I've always had the idea of interviewing people living here and um, sharing their experiences. Also for uh, who is watching my video and wants to know how to have this kind of experience abroad. I think it's very interesting to know first hand from uh, who's basically been uh, uh, living in Japan and uh, doing the experience first hand. So today we welcome David Hello. to our channel. Hi. Hello David. Uh, actually, well, David is from Mauritius, so very interesting uh, country, but he's gonna tell us a little bit more about that later. And uh, yeah, uh, I actually know David, so this is an easy start uh, for me, because yeah. we have known each other for, uh, for a while now. Yeah. So yeah, David, um, let's start. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about life and work in okay. uh, Japan mainly, and then see how this interview uh, goes. <laughs> it's the first time for me too. Should I give a so yeah, an idea um, of where Mauritius is and what it is? Definitely. Because you guys know where Mauritius is? Uh, you do it. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you can see the <laughs> there, you know, Africa is right here. <laughs> Mauritius is the tiny island beside it. Uh, the reason is because, especially in Japan, when whenever we go out and, and I go out too and I meet people and I say I'm from Mauritius, they never know where it is. Maybe, yeah. yeah and right. they never even heard of it. I'm right? sure in many places they wouldn't know where Mauritius is, but that's wrong. You should study geography. <laughs> so just a quick idea. It's the tiny island off the coast of Madagascar uh, on the southeast side. Tiny little island in the Indian Ocean. Um, beautiful place, great beach, hmm. uh, recommended travel. So, yeah, just... Tourist promotion for Mauritius. Yeah. Go to Mauritius. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good. Uh, David, so then, uh, uh, what's, uh, you told us you are from Mauritius. What's your uh, uh, background? Like, if you can tell us a little bit more about you before coming to Japan. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I was born and grew up in Mauritius. And at some point, my family moved to Toronto. Okay. So I did my university high school there. Interesting. And okay. I actually started working there as well. Uh, I worked for five years there and I worked as a teacher okay and at some point I wanted a change and I've always wanted to come to Japan because I studied Japanese in mm -hmm, university mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to see Japan and experience the life uh, not, not only abroad but spe especially here because of um, my connections with Japan in terms of a linguistic connection but also uh, the cultural connection in terms of mm -hmm. anime and the regular stuff, right? Ah, okay, so I was about to ask you this question because the people that I know, including me, going to Japan, they go to Japan for two reasons, normally. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, either uh, anime and manga lovers, because Japan has this aura of, uh, you know, this yeah. popu popularity and this um, soft power regarding the culture, anime, anime manga culture, so it's either that one or just normally people who end up here for like a work experience usually uh, so you are more on the in the first category or both I'm kind of a both and I mean whenever people ask me why did you come to Japan I always have a really long answer because I have many reasons course, yeah. it wasn't just because of the anime stuff it wasn't just because of the uh, mm. culture stuff but just wanting to experience abroad mm. um, knowing that Japan is um, quite an advanced country and knowing that yeah I could experience a different life here so also yeah. I'm a big fan of nature and Jap Japan has beautiful nature as we as we know as we know very yeah. well from our past travels but yeah. Japan is a is a paradise for uh, nature, nature lovers yeah hikers hikers yeah. and so on. absolutely yeah okay that's that's great and uh, so what better way than to go uh, to Japan uh, than uh, you know actually um, having your work basically uh, mm -hmm. here in Japan because your work you started as a teacher yeah so your work really does allow people who want to uh, experience yeah, Japan one sorry one of the most yeah I think common ways to to find a job here is to start out as an English teacher as an English teacher so the demand is really high for English teachers so oh, cool. Uh, could you tell us, first of all, a little bit more why 
teaching? Why did you want to become a teacher? Because yeah. you didn't start as an English teacher to come to Japan, right? But you started before. Oh yeah, Japan, yeah, yeah. Right? I've so been, you have. I've been a teacher all my life. Yeah. Okay. And I mean that question goes back to when I was nine years old. So okay. my fourth grade teacher back in Mauritius was just an unbelievably good teacher mm. inspired the hell out of me and as from nine years old I decided I want to be like him so I wanted to be a teacher as well so this has been my dream job since I was nine years old very nice so now you are living your dream job absolutely. in your dream, dream country. country absolutely yeah. so this guy is living the dream <laughs> can you tell us how to live this dream then so um, practically how uh, did you find a job in Japan uh, yeah, I had to to do a lot of research online and got hired from overseas. Okay. Yeah, because there are many companies who will hire overseas and sponsor you to come in. Sponsor your visa. Yeah, so they'll help you do the visa stuff, um, the application, the translation, uh, getting your uh, to your working holiday visa and all that stuff going on, and they'll help you get a, an apartment mm -hmm. and get your That's good. everything set up here so several companies do that so luckily I got into one and was able to come here okay. uh, now it was obviously for, for, for a teaching job now that job didn't turn out so great uh, I ended up leaving it after three months however once you get into the country mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to move around afterwards right that's true that's yeah. true so afterwards I started looking for different different jobs and mm -hmm. there, you know, there are plenty of websites where not just for English teaching but for foreign jobs for people who mm, are looking to work and are foreigners it's a lot right, better right, if you speak right. Japanese but uh, I mean my Japanese is very limited however that's not always uh, a limitation so you can yeah sure that's not always a limitation especially for uh, uh, jobs like you know uh, teaching English yeah. um, so and then uh, coming on to like living in Japan or teaching in Japan, uh, what are the pros and cons of doing this job in Japan according to you or in your experience? Uh, the pros is that you are right there with the population, you are teaching to Japanese people, so the mm. interaction is genuine, it's right there. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so for me that's a great plus and I mean I've, I've taught here at least I've taught from 0 to 80 years old and the range is quite high there. Right now I'm only teaching teenagers, which is my preferred uh, age group. But either way, I mean, when I last year I was teaching adults and it was great because, of course, the, the type of conversation you have is different. Right, and right. More mature, more maybe mature. You, can, you can talk about... You share different things, the experiences are different. Uh, with teenagers, uh, I mean, I get to see how they're growing up in that society here today and right. it's quite it's quite fascinating and very very fun very yeah, fun uh, i can imagine it's uh, it's kind of unique because almost no jobs allow you this close connection to the, uh, the to the yeah. people japanese yeah. society yeah are, are there any yeah cons? Neg uh, neg the cons, cons for in terms of my job specifically i would say i was very surprised by the bureaucracy involved in schools uh the the the, the levels of Bureaucracy, what a new word in Japan. Bureaucracy, and, <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I'm used to being, you know, in my classroom and answering to one person, which is the principal of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's different here. There are so many different levels of authority, especially in private schools. Uh, sort of hierarchy. Yeah, big, big hierarchy. And it's quite interesting and very frustrating. I frustrating at times. Uh, because you know you have your own ideas about how to run the classroom and if those differ with other people then it creates some difference mm. yeah so, so very interesting this connects me to another question then uh, uh, I guess you already partially answered what's the main difference in teaching in your job no, that you have experienced in Japan and say back in uh, mm. uh, Canada where you started mm. the main difference in teaching I mean, you know, yeah, you already mentioned one actually, no? So the sort of the hierarchy, for example, in uh, Western countries, so in, in Canada, America, do you have more uh, autonomy. freedom left autonomy? Absolutely, left? absolutely, yeah. And I mean, there's still a curriculum to follow and everything, but 
the way teaching happens or the way English teaching happens is still old-fashioned okay say. okay and I mean if you step into an English classroom taught by a Japanese teacher here you quickly understand because they do very little speaking and it's very grammar oriented mm. reading and writing oriented it's a very silent classroom which is a paradox yeah. right yeah for a, a primarily speaking uh, yeah. uh, subject as uh, English or any langu language teaching should be and uh, unfortunately to be honest I need to relate with Italy too because mm -hmm. in Italy uh, English teaching in according uh, in my opinion at least uh, you know the, the school or the academic English teaching is not really that great it's a bit more similar to, to Japan maybe not to that level of mm. theory and yeah, yeah, know, yeah. just um, uh, words of grammar in the air but yeah I agree with you I definitely believe that there should be more practice also because yeah. English speaking in Japan is still uh, uh, slow compared to other countries. Yeah, 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 still yeah. Not, not at, not at and the level I mean, when, of the other countries. When you meet people on the street and you ask them, they've all studied English. It's mandatory in schools here, right? They've all right, studied English. Right. However, they they can't interact with you in mm. English as as freely as they would like. And most of them would blame it on the fact that the, the inst English instruction is mm. very reading and writing based, not speaking based. True, true. Yeah. Doesn't encourage the, the, the speaking. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I think in terms of job for now, uh, I don't have any more uh, questions, but okay. what I'm interested about is also yeah. your uh, actual life uh, in Japan. How has it been life in Japan so far? If I if I have to, to answer that on an overall oh, basis, no, yeah. it's awesome and amazing. I love my life here. It's it's so good. It's I can't even start to list the things that are great. What's um, the most amazing thing for you? The fact that there's always something to do or always something to see. Mm. Um, I mean, we are lucky mm -hmm. enough to be in or close to Tokyo. Right. Um, so there's so, so much happening every day in Tokyo. But even if you go out of Tokyo, the amount of festivals or events or sightseeing spots that you have in this country is overwhelming. There's mm. Not enough time to do it all, <laughs> uh, which right, is the right, which is good a good point because then you never get bored. Yeah, especially for a foreigner. That's yeah. uh, especially in the first years. Yeah, everything that we see around us is new. It's new. So yeah, uh, it's definitely an experience that we uh, we we recommend. Yeah. Um, how about the cultural differences? Do you feel any cultural differences? Um, yeah. First of all, and what struck you the most? I think to this day the most surprising thing for me is the fact that you cannot s talk on the phone in trains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it was very uh, it was shocking to be honest because I never had a limit on the fact that I could speak or not speak on the phone. Are the uh, trains in uh, Mauritius or Canada like dude busy? Whatever you just do whatever you want. Not yeah. whatever you want, but you certainly can use your phone if you have to. It's not frowned upon or there's no law against it. Not that there's a law. It's not. No, the, no law yeah, against it either. Right. However, you know it's the announcements will tell you. Social custom. Social, social custom, custom, not to do it. And my first year, I was going down to Tokyo, and I was talking to my parents on the phone. And the guy next to me said, basically, shut up. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> or staring at you. Yeah. They, they would find a way to make you understand that you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Started. He was incredible. And I tried to tell him, oh no, I'm using my chisai koi, my small voice low voice he said no 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 you can't damn <laughs> it so that was still to this day probably the most interesting thing for me yeah so maybe uh, this connects you this is a funny yet very explanatory episode um that also connects you to uh, like uh, the bigger picture which yeah. is um common being good, really. um, yeah the common uh, and also being uh, very strict when it comes to respecting the rules not not just the written rules but also the unwritten yeah. rules the social yeah. rules and the yeah. which for a foreigner coming from uh, it really depends i believe because uh, if you come from an international background you already know how to adapt mm. and it's easier yeah. but maybe for someone who has never uh experienced lived abroad or yeah lived yeah. abroad or lived in a country where the culture is very different yeah they may be a shock. Yeah, and I think some foreigners do do have that culture shock and do have a problem adapting to it 
because some some roles do seem a little off or a little extreme um, in my case I recognize them and I'm able to follow them most of the time <laughs> um, right, right, but, right. but I could see how some people would think oh no this is a bit too much or this is exaggerated and, and things like that okay okay I think we had a really nice uh, uh, conversation and yeah. hopefully um, the people who are listening to us can have an idea of what is like yeah. to what is like to live and work in Japan in this case uh, as a uh, as a teacher but still I believe it's very important because teaching is one of the most popular uh, jobs yeah. in Japan as a foreigner so yeah. do you do you recommend that as a possible uh, way uh, to, to, to get to Japan, provided that you have a passion for the job. Provided that, yes. Yeah. Provided that you have a passion for the yeah. job. So, do you recommend sure. teaching in Japan? As an experience, as a life experience? Uh, I do, yeah, I do. Uh, however, I, whoever is listening or thinking about doing this, I should also probably warn that while there are many jobs that are quite nice in terms of teaching in Japan, there are also many companies who will work you, will overwork you and I've had horror right, stories right. Uh, all across the board about yeah companies who uh, you know there's very limited um, yeah. solid holidays or really long mm -hmm, hours, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really difficult tasks. Uh, just I guess whoever is thinking of coming here in terms of to teach, uh, do your research. Do your research. Be wary yeah. of ask around. Uh, ask for you know there are plenty of foreigners who will gladly answer questions about this or this company or that company and so on. So yeah, do your research and be informed before accepting anything into any job. Right, and and I think you uh, really gave us a good recommendation when you um, uh, said about networking with other foreigners because. Uh, of course, Japan is a very safe country, and um, there are no issues in general. But uh, as a foreigner, you are you are still uh, basically alone here. Yeah. So it's very important to uh, find a network of people that are living or have lived the same experiences yeah. and the same problems uh, as you, and that can you know help, help, you. help you. That's also a little bit the purpose of our uh, video here, yeah. to just to share some uh, recommendations out of a nice conversation. So to conclude. David, if you had to give uh, one or two tips to someone who wants to have a life or work experience in Japan, what would you recommend? What are the things that you would have wanted to hear uh, before coming to Japan? And But you didn't, and now you can share this experience uh, uh, with your uh, uh, years of life and with your background. Yeah, uh, I came here under the impression that English is very prevalent and many people speak English or many things are done in English uh, however this is not the case uh, even in Tokyo you mm. might run into places where you must speak some Japanese at least to get through right. and uh, you know paperwork is very very complicated here uh, bureaucracy, bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah, right? paperwork is complicated so it's useful to know some Japanese or to be able to you know get your own translation stuff done uh, if you have Japanese friends it's always mm -hmm. good to bring them along uh, yeah so on that technical side of things you know so bank accounts and all that stuff it's it can get quite frustrating if you have no idea how to get through them without the language uh, and stuff so definitely one recommendation uh, study some Japanese beforehand if possible if possible yeah or at least don't don't come thinking that you can rely on english because that's not the case okay yeah i think that's a that's a that's a good recommendation to yeah. to give because it's uh, it's practical and i also feel to recommend based on my experience uh, coming here virtually not knowing uh, japanese mm -hmm. i would always recommend guys uh if you can do a uh, six months um, in intensive or in yeah. part-time course uh, there is a lot of opportunities you can go to uh, the local you know uh, Japanese cultural institutions yeah. uh, you can have online classes now especially now there are so many yeah. platforms that you can go to so and the thing is it's not that you have to be fluent in Japanese but very conversational level is okay too just to get you from from in the place mm. where you, you have no idea what to do or where to go okay. to, yeah. to at least someone or somewhere that can help because you will end up having a bilingual person at some point but if you are lost and completely confused and you have no idea how to get help that would be the frustrating point that would be the frustrating point okay yeah that yeah. yeah, sounds cool uh, yeah. i think it's a it's a really good uh, practical recommendation okay, okay. so 
Thank you very much, yeah, David. Pleasure. It was, uh, pleasure. It was a pleasure. Hope it's helpful for anyone who is listening. I'm and, sure it will. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very excited to share this. It will take a, a little time for me yeah. to uh, to edit the video and so on. But yeah, um, yeah I'm really glad for you coming here and uh, uh, sharing your experience. So my pleasure. Yeah. Thank, thank you for thank inviting you. me. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, you are the pioneer of this, uh, of this series. Hopefully, I, I hope it will go on and uh, yeah. um, I hope to bring you guys more uh, uh, experiences uh, from people living and working in, uh, in uh, Japan. But my idea is in general to uh, give a sort of reference uh, book to everyone who wants to have a life or work experience abroad with a particular focus in Japan because of yeah, course now we live in yeah. uh, Japan that's where yeah. we are but I believe that uh, this recommendation can be translated on a on a general level global level yeah, yeah global yeah. level uh, so thank you very much for uh, your time listening I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I really wish to welcome you soon in a uh, uh, next video in this series okay okay All thank right, you thank David you. yeah bye -bye. and uh, yeah let's conclude yeah. bye 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 matane <laughs> Well, there are many... We'll cut. <laughs> cut! <laughs> okay, so while there are many good... <laughs>